you're in tune with Detroit's only local station, WPON, Wald Lake, Detroit. Talking only WPON. Welcome to the program. I am your host, Clyde Brown, and this is Spooky Talk. Have you had a spooky experience? Well, I encourage you to keep something to write with handy. You may want to write this uh, information down. The number here live at the station is 248-557-1460. Call me. Have you ever had an experience that was spooky? Have you experienced ghosts, weird coincidences, strange occurrences, UFOs, aliens, creepy sights or sounds? Are you interested in psychic beliefs, fortune tellers, spooky movies, eerie pet behavior, science fiction, astrology, the unearthly, voodoo, Bigfoot, the supernatural, monsters, the mysterious, witchcraft, the paranormal, and signs from beyond, then keep listening to the most unique radio show that has ever come to the Detroit area, Spooky Talk. Or you can call 313-633-1599. That's the number for the 24-hour Spooky Talk voicemail line. Here's a Spooky Talk phone call from Ferndale. Hi, this message is for Clyde. Uh, this is Elena and Sarah, and we're calling from Ferndale, Michigan. Um, we're calling about a creepy incident that happened at the AMC Hampton 4 in Rochester, Michigan, before it was creepily uh, mown down um, to make a bed, bath, and beyond. <laughs> The AMC Hampton 4 was haunted, you see. I myself experienced it, Theater 4 in particular. One night as I was checking the uh, behind the curtains of the movie theater screen, I experienced this creepy sensation that I was being followed. I kept looking behind me to see if anyone was there, but no one was. And somehow, two theater seats that were towards the edge of the theater where I could not touch them started rocking all by themselves. I have no idea how this happened. That night, I did not wind up checking behind the curtains because I was too afraid. I ran out of the theater, and I never went in that theater again. Thank you. Call the station now, live. Call 248-557-1460 here at WPONAM 1460. Planned for you on this show, I have an interview with paranormal investigator Amy Williamson, horror movie host The Sinister Minister, and I plan on speaking with a wolf man. Right here on today's show, all kinds of great stuff coming up, but first, this is Spooky Talk on WPON AM 1460. Okay, we're back to Spooky Talk. Email me, Clyde, at SpookyTalk.com. And now, a paranormal investigator, Amy Williamson. I'm here with Amy Williamson, the host of Para Women, Scream Radio, and founder of League of Extraordinary Women of Paranormal and Horror. Hi, Clyde. How are you? Please tell us about one of the spookiest experiences you ever had. Well, um, I would have to say the most hair-raising experience that I've ever had has to go along the lines of it kind of uh, solidified to me that there is something out there because there were just too many coincidences that happened in a series of one day. A woman had contacted me and she was having some things go on in her house that were um, frightening her and her teenage daughters. You know, I'm a paranormal investigator. Um, I just don't go into a house to prove that there's something there. If there's something there and it's making you uncomfortable, I can help help you um, move it along. And or I always say, if I can't do it, I will find someone who will do it for you. She talked about how they had moved in, and and she said, like every night about 3 a.m., she would hear this rattling of the door up to the breezeway. The first night she heard it, she jumped up and she ran to the door, you know, to see what was going on. She thought someone was breaking in and there was nobody there and she couldn't figure it out. And so she went back to bed and 
the next night it happened again and again she thought the same people were back to you know break in so she jumped up and she ran and no one was there and then the third night it happened and she thought there were some kids that were kind of playing a joke on her so she didn't get up um she wasn't gonna you know fall for it and so she said it just kept rattling and rattling and it, it was non-stop so finally she got up and she went to the door and it stopped and she was like you know she couldn't figure out what was going on and she never told her teenage daughters about this because she didn't want to scare them. Um, she was a nurse, and she had to work a night shift one night, and she got this phone call from their, her teenagers and said, Mom, you know, come home quickly. Somebody's trying to break in the house. And so that's when she contacted me because it was now scaring her daughters. And so, you know, we set up a time where I was going to come over and we were going to do the blessing. That day I was running late, um, I, I'm also an actress, and I was, I was, the next day I was going to uh, um, audition, so I had to get my headshots together. And, um, and, and a lot of times things happen for, you'll, you'll find that things happen for a reason. Like, I don't think that it was a coincidence that I was late because it kind of set up um, the events that played out later in the day. Fate. Well, no, no. Actually, I, ghosts kind of arrange these things so that it happens. So they're not on the same time, linear time frame as we are. Wow. So, mm -hmm. and I finally ended up at Walmart, of all places. <laughs> and so I'm trucking through Walmart, and I called her, you know, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. I'm not usually like this, I, I, you know, I, but I have to let you know that I'm going to be a little bit late. And so she's like, well, it's no problem, you know. And I was really thirsty because I'd been going all over town, you know, and I was so thirsty. And I thought, <laughs> maybe I should stop and get something to drink. And I'm like, no, no, I don't have time for this. So anyway, I got the headshots, and I raced over there, and I was so thirsty. And I got to the door, and she's like, you know, come in, come, come in. She said, um, do you like coffee? And I said, are you kidding? I love coffee. And she said, well, she said, after I um, hung up the phone with you, I started smelling coffee in my house. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. She said, um, the coffee maker started making you coffee. And I was like, that's weird. And she's like, yeah, because, you know, I get up in the morning and so I get the coffee all ready and I put it on a timer. And she said, but after I hung up the phone with you, the coffee maker started making coffee. And she's like, would you like a cup? And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, I'll have a cup of your ghostly coffee. Thank you. <laughs> she said, um, you know, so we went ahead and, you know, um, I was, I, I like, I like them to take me around the house and kind of tell me what's going on. And, and then she said, well, you know, not only was the handle of her breezeway door shaking, also it sounded like someone was bouncing a basketball upstairs. Again, going back to the fact it knew I was coming. It, it just knew. It knew it, and it was, you know, letting itself be known. And I was like, okay. And, you know, so she took me to the door, and she said at one point she had done, and this is like a paranormal investigator trick that you can um, do, that some people do, They you can sprinkle flour on the floor. Yeah. See if, you know, there's footprints or whatever. And she had done that, and I said, oh, really? I said, it, did you see anything? And she said, well, it looked like little bird marks. And I said, did you take a picture? And, of course, she hadn't. And I was like, oh, drat. So... Anyway, we decided um, to do the blessing, and I always like to start my blessing from the basement up. And um, I, I, we were doing, um, we were smudging, which is a Native American um, you use cedar and sage, and it um, it's a cleansing um, herb that kind of draws things out of the house. And um, you always open a window or a door or something so that whatever's in the house, it has an outlet to get out. So um, we, I had her open a window. Um, it was in the fall time, and so we went down to the basement, and we were just kind of chatting. And I'm, for some reason, I kept getting, a, and I'm not psychic. I'm, the more I do things in the paranormal, the more I'm finding that, you know, like I think everybody's a little bit psychic, but um, I, it's kind of helping me, you know, pick up on things that I normally wouldn't. But this name, Larry, kept um, playing in my head. Huh. and. You know, and I said, um, did anyone die here? And she's like, yeah, there was a man who had passed away. And I said, was his name Larry? And she said, I don't know what his name was. And I was like, oh, okay. So anyway, we did the blessing, and we went from 